Welcome back to Sociology 227. This is Tanya Tichkoski, video two. In this video, I've got three goals. First, I'm going to introduce you to Tanya Tichkoski, focusing on her work, reading and writing disability differently. Then I'm going to explore how Tanya Tichkoski looks at disability as a textual outcome. This will get you ready to do your two paragraph response. Let's do it. This is Tanya Tichkoski, who is currently professor at OISE, or the Teachers College at the University of Toronto. A sociologist by training, Tichkoski follows quite closely in the footsteps of another professor who worked at OISE, Dorothy Smith. She is the author of numerous books, but as I said to you, I want to focus on her book on texts, reading and writing disability differently. For those of you interested in the politics of university accessibility, The Question of Access is a great book as well. Now, maybe I'm a softie, but one of the most important parts about her work is that she is dyslexic, as she indicates in the book, and her partner, Rod, is blind. Whenever she writes, she always reads aloud to Rod, who helps her edit her grammar. I think that's beautiful, always working together. Anyway, back to the book. After Oliver's Politics of Disablement, Reading and Writing Disability Differently was the second book that I've read in the world of disability studies, and it really opened up my eyes. Let me tell you about it. The book's subtitle presents us a window into its contents, as all good titles should. It is The Textured Life of Embodiment. Let's explore that. As I said, Tchaikovsky is very deeply indebted to work done by Dorothy Smith. Smith, remember, was interested in how text abstracts from the living conditions where women live and work, and yet alters that reality. Similarly, Tchaikovsky is asking how it is that texts about disability shape is it as an object, and how the lived reality of disability is an outcome of accounts that are supposed to simply describe it. Here, she isn't so much asking about a sociology of the position of disabled people, as Oliver is, she is interested in how texts about disability shape it as the opposite of healthy, productive life, or as bioeconomic loss. The metaphor, textured, should make you think of the layered ways that meaning can come together. There isn't a single story of disability, but rather a world of texts that mediate so many different ways of life into a purportedly singular category. So when you think of texts, don't just think of books, but also think about the various ways that we come to inscribe disability in the written form. This should get you thinking about Foucault. In discussing Foucault, I want you to think about the institutional places where we need to tell the truth about disability, and how disability comes to be a form of subjectivity. If anybody lives with a disability, you realize how much of your life is managed in paperwork. So the questions here are about how documents that are supposed to be about disability as a public policy problem constitute a particular group of people only as a problem to be included. We can see the same definitions of bioeconomic loss put to work in government policy documents, as I'll show you later on. So Tchaikovsky is arguing that disability isn't just located in bodies, it is described textually. Finally, questions of embodiment. Whereas Oliver takes his inspiration from materialism to ask questions of history, Tchaikovsky is interested in questions of embodiment. Here the point is not only to say that we dwell in our bodies, disabled or otherwise, but in the way that disability and impairment relate to one another. We can't divide our bodies from our lived realities, says Tchaikovsky, as much as we would like to. While it might be convenient to divorce our politics from particular bodies, these are always our entry points into the world. But, and this is important, we often find that this bodily experience is removed by particular textual enactments. What makes them inhuman is not just how they treat people, but how they treat the experience of being a person, as I will explain later on. So while the social model says we have to divide disability as oppression from biological impairment, Tchaikovsky says we cannot do so so easily. Let's turn to the piece you read this week. The primary object of the reading you did this week is newspaper articles, how texts organize disability. Remember, the piece opens with a description of a newspaper article about a girl, Courtney Popkin, 
who will die because of a lack of rare disease research. Or, at least, this is the point of the text. Tchaikovsky asks how a particular reading of disability as deadly is established in that narrative, and how we are forced to ignore other ways of living with disability in that all-too-common narrative. Earlier, I talked about the problem of disability as bioeconomic loss. In accounts like this one, disability is organized as something that takes out of life and takes out of the economy. Courtney would be alive if not for the disability that killed her. That will cost money to fix. It is a limit on what we can afford and what otherwise would be a healthy body. Texts constitute disability because they frame it in a particular way, most often as a problem. Disability is described in text as something to be fixed, to be avoided. It is a medical problem, or an economic problem, or an accommodation problem. It always takes away. Tchaikovsky asks how it could be seen otherwise, as in the case of collective, affirmative, and positive disability politics focusing on barrier removal and the celebration of human diversity. Too often, disability is made meaningful only as lack, and not as one of the many different ways of being and identifying as a person. This is the difference between disability as limit and disability as possibility. Next, let me turn to federal tax forms. We're going to see the same sort of thing at work. Disability is bioeconomic loss. I want to point out how a particular tax form shapes the way we live and think about disability in Canada. This is the T2201A form, needed to get the disability tax credit, currently worth $8,416. It is non-refundable, meaning that it isn't paid out, but is rather reduced from an amount owing. It's a little more technical than that, but just be assured they don't give you $8,000. Here I've sorted out the three steps to indicate who the official text producer is. So how does it work? Well, you put your name on the thing and go to the doctor. And they fill out the form if they feel as though you have what it takes to count as a disabled person. I'll get into the technicalities of that on the next uh, slide, but the assumption here will be that you are verified as disabled. Next, the doctor sends the Canada Revenue Agency the T2201A form, should you be verified, you are good for the next five years. Here you gain access to other savings schemes and public services so long as you're deemed worthy of the credit. Finally, and this is how we see the redistributive aspect of the credit, you get to claim the disability amount on your taxes for the next five years. This can be retroactively applied to as long as you had the particular impairment so verified. What matters here is the very strict process whereby we verify disability about the kinds of people you need to have judge your application, and about the select few people who actually benefit from the disability tax credit. If we ask how the government tells the truth about disability, we need to follow the paperwork. The technical aspects of the form are important because of how they constitute disability. Disability is negative, lack, it is a medical problem, medicalized, and it is individual located in an individual body. To qualify as disabled, you need to meet the following criteria. You need to be markedly restricted for a period of at least one year or more, either in the past or anticipated, in one of the following areas. So the form takes a functional approach to what constitutes disability, and it is through these categories that one can be restricted. Here I want you to think about the activities that you do all day, and think about how many of them fall within the form's purview. Now, it isn't solely that one is restricted in these ways of everyday life, but it meets the threshold of disablement. If you think about walking, for example, you qualify if you A, cannot walk, or B, it takes you three times as long or longer than a normal walker to travel 100 meters. It is interesting that in order to classify what disability is, you need to constitute a normal form for the type of activity that you are talking about. Not only this, but you also have to have a criteria that can be objectively differentiated from the other person's normal function. So disability has to be seen as the opposite of ability, which the form also produces. I would like to add that the form doesn't see what it is actually like to walk. 
This 100 meters is an ideal type. Is it in Halifax or Montreal? Are there stairs on these 100 meters? A curb cut? What about stuff we don't do because of barriers, like snow or ice in the city of Kingston? All of this is ignored for an individualized, medicalized, and loss-focused understanding of daily life. So the disability tax credit and the disability tax credit application process are the examples that I want to use today to talk about disability produced textually. In doing so, I want to get Tanya Tichkowski and Mike Oliver working together. They have a different approach to disability, one material and one textual. However, they are still focusing on disability as it is made problematic. For Oliver, that's problematic in terms of capitalism. For Tichkowski, it's problematic in terms of the negative meaning to which we attribute disability. Putting them together, I want you to think through these differences, but also look at the similarities. Both of them are trying to think about disability as a source of life and improving the conditions of those who we label as abnormal and disabled. Both of them are opposed to disability as bioeconomic loss. That's it for me. Now it's your turn. In two paragraphs between five to eight sentences in length and with reference to the readings, one, explain what it means to say disability is a textual outcome. Two, contrast this approach with the social model's materialist understanding of disability.